Hey everyone, thank you for stopping by my channel. My name is Jennifer Woods. This week I am discussing the movie Sleepaway Camp 2, Unhappy Campers. You see what they did there? They took the idiom Happy Campers and turned it on its head. Brilliant. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so, and that way you will be able to keep up with my weekly videos. Sometimes I release a little extra if the mood strikes me. So, getting back to this week's movie. Sleepaway Camp 2 opens with a bunch of kids and a counselor telling scary stories around a campfire. This boy who looks about 12 tells everyone about the time his sister's friend got a side of fried rat with her restaurant order. A teen girl with a very 80s ponytail is like, oh yeah, well I know about this girl who was actually a boy dressed like a girl by his crazy aunt. This kid went on to kill like a lot of people at a camp dozens of miles away. At this point, a counselor named Angela, played by Bruce Springsteen's younger sister Pamela Springsteen, emerges from behind the forest trees and is like, Phoebe, I want to speak to you in my office. As Angela and Phoebe walk away, the others continue to talk about the killer from Phoebe's story. One of them heard she went on to star in The Facts of Life, and this sounds legit. Uh, popular TV programs are great places for killers to hang out and chill. It should also be added that there's a young man named Sean at the campfire whose father was one of the cops who arrested Angela. Meanwhile, Angela is upset with Phoebe because Phoebe snuck out with the boys and was caught telling scary stories with them. She threatens to send Phoebe home. Phoebe's like, go ahead, I dare you, and walks off. But the joke's on her because now she's lost and can't see in the dark. She calls out to Angela for help, and Angela helps by sending her home to her maker. After the title sequence, it's a new day at Camp Rolling Hills. Angela walks into her bunk, blows her whistle, and awakens the sleeping girls from their slumber. One of them, Allie, likes to sleep shirtless for no reason other than because this is an 80s B-movie. The girls notice that Phoebe's not there, and her stuff has vanished as though she had never existed. Angela informs them that Phoebe was naughty and was dealt with accordingly, and then she chastises Allie for her choice of sleeping attire, which is no attire at all. Allie better watch out. She could be next on Angela's list. Meanwhile, two creepy little boys are peeking in the cabin window and taking pictures. Angela talks to Uncle John, who I guess is a camp owner or something, and they discuss her decision to send Phoebe home. He tells her she did what she had to do. He has no idea that sending Phoebe home is a euphemism. Now the campers are at the mess hall for breakfast. Allie attracts whistles from the boys. She's named for Allie Sheedy, by the way. All of the campers are named for Brat Packers. Phoebe, Sean, Emilio, Mayor, Judd, Anthony, etc. Allie scoffs at the food being served. Typical ungrateful brat. She pokes fun at the Schultz sisters, calling them by a juvenile nickname. They're a couple of stoners, and while Allie doesn't have a problem with weed, she doesn't see the need to smoke it 24-7. There's a boy at the table called Sean who asks a girl at the table named Molly if she's a closet dopehead. She says no. He is pleased. She's the perfect little angel of the group in addition to being the main character, and that should bode well for her as the body count rises. Uh, she's played by Renee Estevez, the younger sister of Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez. Already I can tell Sean has the hots for Molly. I'm interested to see what comes of that. Meanwhile, Allie uses a homophobic slur in reference to Angela. She's clearly toast. Angela has been given the honor of being called Counselor of the Week. Allie is horrified. She's still being a little crybaby over Phoebe's exit. Angela gets out her guitar so that they can all sing the Happy Camper song. She asks Molly and Allie to accompany her. This has got to be the most obnoxious song ever, complete with hand motions. What, are they nine? When I was nine, campers sang songs about wives being poisoned by their no-good husbands. We were already well beyond this patronizing nonsense. The last line of the song is about camping until the day they die. Prophetic. After breakfast, some counselor with a blonde mullet named TC wants to talk to Angela about Phoebe. She says they can talk later and that she'll call him. He's like, but I don't have a phone. I kind of wonder if Gen Z and Gen Alpha would even get that joke. At the very least, it doesn't hit quite the same in 2024. 
At the pool, Molly and Sean get to know each other better. Sean is the son of a cop and his parents are divorced. Molly's parents have been married for over a quarter of a century and she has five siblings. Three girls and three boys. She says they're the Brady Bunch. Uh, no. The Brady Bunch was about a blended family. Does sweet, naive Molly even know what a bonus sibling is? Angela comes across the Stoner Sisters in the woods. They're singing the Happy Camper song, but they've altered the lyrics to something inappropriate. Angela is not pleased. When she later catches one of them with a boy, she figures it's time to have a little barbecue in the woods with the Shoat Sisters. During arts and crafts, a girl of maybe 12 or 13 requests to go home in a petulant tone. Apparently things got a little too real for her when she spilled red paint all over herself. Maybe she had a premonition of what was to come if she stuck around. So Angela sends her home. She legit sends her home. That's not a euphemism this time. Uncle John is like, well, two are gone now. You win some, you lose a couple. And Angela is like, actually, you lose four. She tells him about the Shote sisters. He's a little unhappy with her for not having told him before she made that unilateral decision. But what are you going to do? Angela tells the girls in her cabin that she sent the Shote sisters home. No great loss to them. Now she has a meeting she needs to get to. And while she's gone, the boys enter the girls' cabin and all hell breaks loose. Angela breaks up the party so the fun doesn't last long. By the way, the girls have been teasing Molly about this thing she has going on with Sean. Apparently something's brewing there. The girls want to get revenge on the boys for taking their bras and panties. Molly's like, nah, we'll get in trouble. Basically being a little Mary Sue. The others are like, don't worry, we won't get caught. So they go to the boys' cabin, taunt them, and demand that the boys give them back their underthings while TC basically rolls his eyes. With a mullet like that, I'm not surprised he doesn't really care if they tear the place up. A little wild stallion named Mare tells them that if they don't give her back her bra, they're going to be seeing a lot of skin over the course of the summer, flashing her chest for emphasis. Oh yeah, they're shaking in their sandals now. Angela walks in right at that moment and gets an eyeful. Mare is like, oh shoot. Alone in the car together, Angela gives Mare a second chance. Just apologize, and they can put this nasty business behind them. Mare says she'd rather be dead. Angela pulls out the drill she keeps handy in the back seat and calls Mare's bluff. So yet another camper has been sent home. A couple of boys vow revenge on Angela. They'll get her good for that. Angela's now sitting alone by an abandoned cabin in the woods, humming Kumbaya. No, that's not a red flag at all. Molly stumbles upon her. She says she followed Angela there, but Angela's cool with that because she respects Molly. The two of them have a heart-to-heart -heart about Sean. Angela thinks she has a real shot with a guy. Molly says, fat chance. She couldn't even get on the cheerleading team. No cute boyfriend for her. Meanwhile, the boys are working on an art project, a mask to scare Angela. Two little boys are in their cabin looking at photos they took of girls without their permission. Angela walks in on them and asks to see the photos. They play ignorant. When they finally hand over the photos, she discovers there are a few inappropriate ones of Mare and even a compromising one of Angela. She threatens to tell Uncle John on them. TC says he'll take care of Charlie and Emilio. They look about 10, but apparently they're regulars at this camp. TC warns Angela that the older boys have some tricks up their sleeves and to be on the lookout. The two pranksters are in the woods in their costumes, preparing for the big scare. Needless to say, it doesn't go over the way they were expecting, and Angela gets the last laugh. You'll have to watch the movie to see how it all goes down. The girls are listening to music by a campfire. Angela shows up in a mask, holding a chainsaw. She says that she knew about the boys' plan all along. The girls are impressed. She doesn't exactly lie. She admits the boys won't be showing up, and that's true. They definitely won't be showing up, ever again. Allie is in the bathroom, apparently with cramps. Angela is rightly skeptical. Sure enough, Allie is getting it on in the ladies' room with a boy. Angela comes knocking on the screen door. Allie is able to make herself presentable while the boy hides in a stall. Somehow, Angela doesn't see what's going on through the screen door. Allie, meanwhile, is listening to music on the radio while she's on her deathbed with cramps. Allie finally opens the screen door and mocks Angela's costume. She says she can tell it's ketchup, not really blood. 
Goes to show how much she knows. Molly and Sean are goofing off playing ball when TC comes upon them looking for Judd and Anthony. Must be the two dead guys. Allie confronts Molly and says, Go ahead and jump into bed with Sean. See if I care. It's not like he has skills. Angela comes upon Molly crying in the girl's cabin and has a little chat with her. Molly snitches on Allie like the schoolgirl she is. Allie finds a note tucked into the mirror in the bathroom, telling her to meet up at the boarded cabin at 5 o'clock. It's from Sean, but not really. Somehow, Allie knows exactly where to find this cabin that I suspect is beyond the camp property line. Surprise, surprise, the note was from Angela. Her plans for Allie will include some poetic justice, and that's all I'll say. The remaining campers who die don't really do anything wrong. They just know stuff that Angela would rather keep hidden. For example, Demi made some calls to the houses of girls who were allegedly sent home and tells Angela all about it. The two of them are alone in the girls' cabin. While Demi is blabbering on and on, Angela's poking around the cabin looking for something that will shut her up for good. A pencil? A radio? Scissors? She goes with a guitar string. The next camper to die walks in on Angela as she's dealing with Demi's body. Angela is in the cabin playing her guitar and singing Kumbaya as Molly is outside kissing Sean goodnight. Looks like it's their first kiss. Took them long enough. Molly is on cloud nine, but she finds out upon entering the cabin that all the girls have been sent home. This disturbs her, and rightly so. Angela has a dream where several creepy scenes from the movie are played in slow motion. Uncle John fires Angela. TC supports him on this 100%. Molly is shocked to hear Angela has been fired. Molly and Sean come upon Angela sulking next to the abandoned cabin, which we learn is about a mile away. But they act like it's just around the corner. Molly has faith they can change Uncle John's mind, but Angela has no hope. Angela says TC reminds her of some boy she drowned as a kid. Molly just looks at her like, huh? Meanwhile, Sean is trying to enter the cabin. Turns out it's unlocked. Angela tries to stop him, but she's too slow. I'll stop there so as to not completely spoil the ending. I have to say, the ending is my least favorite part of the movie. Not that I agree with Angela's life choices, but there was one thing she did at the end that makes me very angry. I'm still traumatized by it. So that's your warning, trigger warning. Also, the movie ends with a cliffhanger. So if you don't like cliffhangers, um, just be prepared. I give this cult horror movie a 4 out of 5. Of course I'm grading it on a curve, but it's one of my favorites of this genre. I prefer 80s slasher to 90s or beyond. You might be wondering what Pamela Springsteen is up to these days. Apparently she's a photographer now. She's been a still photographer for several movies, including the TV movie Dancing at the Harvest Moon. And she's been a cinematographer for a couple of her brother's videos. I read this on IMDb. Renee Estevez played Molly, and she's Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez's younger sister, as I stated earlier. She is known for Heathers, and she was also in the TV movie Dead Silence in the early 90s, about three girls who kill a man in a hit and run. So that's all I have for today. Have a great night. I hope you enjoy your Friday the 13th, and keep an eye out for my bonus video at the end of the week.